In this video we're going to be discussing the orientation and layout of the ICAT website. Um, it's, as you can see it's pretty um, similar to most standard web pages with options uh, in different toolbars along the top here, um, down the side um, and then you'll see some at the bottom too. I want to go through every one of them so um, to make sure that you draw your eye um, to those important components. So the um, ICAT website is continuously being updated with new data, um, different version and softwares. So you'll see um, different tools from time to time um, being added um, and activated. Um, it's really just for the purpose of optimal user experience. So those um, that kind of information is coming from you guys as, as users. So um, you'll you'll see things um, change from time to time. So don't let that put you off of uh, using the website. Um, you'll see uh, Iowa here in the center um, takes up most of the page, um, a series of red dots and gray dots you see. Um, I'll explain what those are in a second. You'll see the rather large search panel, um, table of contents, some people may refer to it um, as the panel here on the left hand side gives you um, opportunities to search um, different data, different years, um, and then select it based on um, various criteria. Advanced option, um, also we won't go into um, what that does in this video, but um, there's um, of course different options that um, you can do a quick search literally is what it means is just a quick search of data and then a little bit more advanced. Um, you'll see your navigation tools here um, I'll go through um, some of these in a second, um, the other tools that you see there at the top of the screen. Right in the center of the screen, like I said, you see these red um, dots here. This means that the crash data that you currently have selected um, is red, shows up red there. Um, this is the default that they have currently. Again, this may change also, but you'll see 2018, 2019 and statewide data, crash data for Iowa is currently selected. And then the gray dots there you see in the background um, represents the data that Iowa has, but it isn't selected um, here in your search criteria. So just for um, visual purposes, I like to turn that off, my map configuration um, icon over here, go to crash points and then show non-selected crash locations, like I said, click apply and that takes those gray dots off of there for you. Um, that's really just preference but uh, um, like I say you can you can do that um, pretty easily. So you'll see um, you've currently got 12 years here in the year um, choose year crash selection dialog box. You will only see 10 years of the last data that you have in there. So right now, of course, you've, you can see 2008 on here. That will drop off when they've updated the um, next version. Versioning usually occurs every six months or so. Um, so you will see that change um, and um, different years um, data be updated. You'll see the small vertical um, toolbar here displays nine of the different icons for navigating around your page. These become really important sometimes when you get disorientated and you have to find your way back. Um, I discuss these a little bit more in depth in a few, another video. Um, and then other options include, um, you see these tools right here. The first one you can um, select by point, line, polygon, and etc. Um, the second one up there, how you mark up your map. Um, so you might want to draw a point, line, polygon. Um, the third one up there is utilizing the identify tool, which provides really kind of just quick access to base level data. So you might want to um, select a point and it will give you some uh, base level information right up there so you don't have to kind of um, drill down. Um, too much into that. And then the fourth option up here, you'll see the measuring tool, um, area, uh, distance, uh, location, um, and these are all have um, different units available too. You can see on this one, we've got miles, kilometers, feet, meters, etc. Um, if you pop over to the right hand side of your screen, you'll see um, a series of six icons here at the top. This first tool, um, got to see me use it here a second ago, really um, 
gives you an option to configure the way your map looks. Um, so you might want to change colors or um, circles. Um, the second option here allows you to use some base maps for some underlying data. Um, I might want some county boundaries, um, DOT district, etc. Um, the next option allows you to create reports um, based on your crash criteria. The fourth option up here allows you to do bar graphs, line charts and pie charts. This one here um, allows you to create tables, maybe you want to export some data, um, merge it with some Excel um, database or, or something like that. And then that final option up there um, allows you to create collision diagrams. If you come over here to the left just slightly, you'll see um, an option to switch your base map. You'll see 12 or more base maps um, here. These top ones you see are Esri um, maintained and the ones at the bottom there. Um, you may see one or two more pop up from time to time. These are DOT generated um, and maintained by the DOT. Um, the icons you see here at the top of your screen um, provide options to open maybe a previously saved document, save a project um, or change your tool preferences. Finally at the bottom left hand side of your screen you'll see a crash count. Now remember this is just based on what crash criteria that you have selected in your um, selection boxes right here. So right now you can see it's 70,000 plus crashes showing up. Um, if I go ahead and deselect 2018 you'll see that goes down to 14,000 and so on and so forth. Um, moving over to the right hand side of the screen um, you'll see you can produce quick reports based on the um, criteria that you've selected or this uh, what this filter option does is just gives you um, a general kind of overview of what you've selected so right now like we said um, we've selected statewide 2019 um, and no other filters have been applied to that so that gives you a general overview of how the ICAT website works